What's up everybody, in this video we're going to learn how to do 2D prefix sums. Um, this video assumes you're a little bit familiar with 1D prefix sums, so it may be a good idea to brush up on those before watching this video. So first obvious question is what is a 2D prefix sum and when would you like to use one? In a situation where we have a grid, um, and this grid could be anything, it could be full of numbers or it could have trues and falses, um, but anytime you have a grid and you want to try and analyze a subset of the grid, what you're going to want to do is use the 2D prefix sum in order to try and analyze it in constant time rather than doing it in linear time. So for example, let's say like I have this, this sub box right here. And let's say like I need to be able to add up all those numbers. Ordinarily, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to do four plus two plus zero plus one plus two plus one. But with the help of a 2D prefix sum, we'll be able to calculate that in constant time using subtraction, very similar to how it works in a 1D prefix sum. The core of how this works is that in our chart over here, which is one dimension larger than the uh, grid that we're gonna be analyzing, and again, very similar to 1D prefix sum, has to be a little bit larger. Um, what we're going to get is we're going to get the difference between the starting and the ending point, and that'll tell us how much we've accumulated through the course of, of uh, going through the area. So, um, for example, uh, in this square right here, and this, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but this four by four here is gonna to correspond to this four by four here. So in this square right here, for example, the number that you're gonna place here will be the sum of everything that's in this box right here, basically everything up and to the left of it. Um, and much like a, uh, like a 1D prefix sum, we can use the difference in order to figure out how much we accumulated uh, going through an area. So first thing I'm gonna demonstrate is how to fill this up with uh, uh, information in the first place. So starting in here, essentially what we're gonna do is every square needs to represent the sum of everything that's above and to the left of it. So just for example, to make sure we're clear on what that means, you would have a 10 here because here, one plus two plus three plus four is 10. Um, so let's go ahead and fill the chart out. Uh, erase the start at top. Okay, so starting at the top, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the number that corresponds to this box. We add it to the number above and to the left and then subtract it from the diagonal. And I'm gonna demonstrate why that works um, once we get a couple, couple numbers in here. But for right now, just, just trust that it works. And on the second row, we'll see why it works. So for here, this already has a one, and then above is a zero, left is a zero, and diagonal is a zero. So plus zero, plus zero, minus zero doesn't change it. This just ends up being a one. For this next spot right here, we're gonna have the sum of what's above and to the left, uh, which is a total of one. Add it to what's already there, which is a two, and that's gonna give us a total of three. And we would subtract zero, which isn't gonna do anything. So that's still just gonna be a three. Um, continuing over, this is a zero in that spot. So zero plus zero plus three minus zero is still gonna be three. Um, and this is gonna be four plus zero plus three minus zero, which is just gonna be seven. Um, for this one right here, uh, we had a three in this box right here to here. So we're gonna do three and then add the one that's above it, add the zero to the left and uh, subtract this zero, which is just gonna give us a four. Okay, so this is the one where I really wanna focus on, on why we're subtracting the diagonal and adding, um, because this is where it starts to actually make sense. So this box right here needs to represent the sum of all these numbers right here. And the way that's looking is if you look at this three, this three represents one plus two. We've already figured out that, that if we just trust that, that that is the sum of everything up and to the left of it, then that three represents one plus two. This four here represents this one plus three. So, if I were to add that four and that three together, three plus four, really what I'm doing is I'm adding that top box, which is one plus two, and the left box, which is one plus three. So let's pause a minute and look at that. So I'm trying to figure out what goes in this box right here. The box above it has a three, which is the one and the two, it's the top area. The box to the left of it has a four, which is that left area. We're gonna add it to the corresponding location which is just this row two, column two, or second row, second column rather, um, which is four. And that's gonna give us one plus two plus one plus three plus four, which is 11. But the reason why this is too high is because this number here got added twice. It got added with the one and the two and it got added with the one and the three. So that top section is represented by this number here. And we have to subtract that one back out and what that's doing is giving us everything above and everything to the left, but then minusing out this one that got added twice. And then what we're gonna be left with is 10. Um, and 10 is the sum of that top box. We'll point that out a couple more places to make sure that that concept is solidified. Cause this is the trickiest part about understanding these is why, 
we're subtracting the diagonal and adding the, the horizontals. But this is this is sort of a staple for any 2D prefix sum. Um, for this box right here, uh, we have a two to start with. So we're going to write that down first. We've got two plus the number above it. The number above it is this uh, three here represents the one plus two plus. Yeah, the one plus two. No, we're not far enough. I'm on the wrong three. Uh, let me see here. Oh, because that was supposed to be a 10. I didn't fill that 10 in. 10. OK, looking at this box right here. OK, so the number above it is a 3. That represents the 1 plus 2 plus 0, which is still just 3. So we're going to do 3 plus um, the number to the left of it, which is the 10. That's the sum of this box right here, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10 plus 10, um, plus the number that's already there. Um, that was the 2, 2 plus. So I have the 2 that's already there. I have the number above it, this 3 right here, which is the 1 plus 2 plus 0. I have the 10 here which is the number to the left of it, which is the one plus two plus three plus four. And if you look, you'll see that that one and two on the top got added twice. So we have to subtract that. And the sum of those is found in this box right here. That's the diagonal. So in order to do that, we got to do minus three. So we have the two that was already on the box. We have the three that's above it, we're adding that. We have the 10 that's to the left of it, we're adding that. And then we have the diagonal three, which we're subtracting because we added the one, two twice. Um, and that's going to leave us with uh, with twelve. Back out of that. Okay. Oops. Uh, Ten and twelve. Okay. So, and just again to kind of relook at that, that's this three plus this ten minus this three, which is going to be adding this together with this, subtracting this top section and then adding it to the two that was already there, um, which gave us 12. Okay, so, uh, oops, too far. Okay, uh, last number here is gonna be seven plus 12 uh, minus three plus the two that's already there, because there's already a two there. Um, the seven is gonna be this entire top row. The 12 is this entire side area. The two obviously is this two. And then the minus three is to subtract out this top area that got added twice. Um, and that's going to leave us with uh, 18. 18. Okay. Um, moving on to the next row, uh, we'll just kind of continue and fill out the box. I'll do one or two more of the, the sums at the end. So this one is going to be uh, four, zero, and three, which is seven. This one is going to be 10 and seven, which is 17 minus four. Uh, which is 13. Uh, this one here is going to be 12 and 13, which is 25 minus 10, which is 15 plus one, which is 16. Um, and let's go ahead and look at that one. So that 12 up here, uh, that 12 represents the sum of all of these right here. That 13 represents the sum of all these right here. Um, we added the one, two, three, four, that original 10 that we did in the beginning. We're subtracting that back out because that got added twice we add it to the one that we have here. So 12 plus 13 plus one, and then minus that 10 in the top corner. And that gave us 16. Uh, 12 plus 13 uh, plus one minus 10. So 12 and 13 is 25 plus one is 26 minus 10 is 16. That's where that's coming from. All right, uh, moving right along. The next number is gonna be 16 plus 18 minus 12 plus four, um, which is 26. Uh, bottom row, uh, we're going to have, this is still going to be seven. <clears throat> this is going to be uh, 13 plus seven minus seven, and then plus two, which is 15. Uh, this one here is going to be uh, 16 plus 15 minus 13 uh, plus one, which is three and five, 18, 19. All right, this last one here, we'll go ahead and uh, show the boxes for this one. There's going to be 26, <clears throat> which is this whole top section right here. Because um, again, these numbers represent everything above and to the left of it added together, um, plus this 19, which represents this side section right here, minus the 16, which is this top three by three, which has gotten added twice, and then plus the three that was already there. Um, so we're going to back that out here. That's going to be uh, oops, too far. Uh, 19 plus 26 plus three to get the total. Uh, what is that? 36, 37, 38, 39, 48. And then minus 16, uh, which is that top three by three box, which is going to leave us with 32. 32. Okay. 
So now that we have this uh, 2D prefix sum box, every one of these numbers represents the sum of the grid that's up and to the left of it. So for example, if I have this 19 here, <clears throat> that 19 represents everything in this area right here. Now, if I wanted to, for example, just get um, the area right here in this spot, then I've got 19, or sorry, I've got 16. 16 represents the whole top area. And then what I need to do is I need to subtract out this top section, which is represented by this three right here. So if I were to do 16 minus three, then essentially what I've done is I've done this whole box here minus this top box, which is gonna leave me with the sum in the middle here, three plus four plus two plus three plus one, which is 10, 13. Um, and 16 minus three is in fact 13. Let's look at a couple more of these. Um, if I were to use, if it, say like I wanted to find this position right here, then what I wanna do is I wanna start with this 16, which represents the whole top section, the three by three section. And then I wanna subtract out the seven, which represents this side section right here. So what that's gonna give me is this entire top section minus this side section and that'll leave me with the sum of this box right here, which is two, zero, four, two, uh, zero, and one, which is uh, nine and 16 minus seven is in fact nine. Okay, so that works if it's bordering the top or the bottom, but what if it's something towards the middle? Um, let's say like, for example, I wanna do just this middle two by two box. So let's look at everything that we have to subtract out. I can start with this 16 because that 16 represents that whole section here. I can subtract out the three because that represents this top here. I can subtract out the seven because that represents the side here. But if you notice, I subtracted this one out twice. Um, so very similar to how we initially filled the 2D prefix sum box. When we initially filled the 2D prefix sum box, we had to add the number above, we had to add the number to the left, and we had to subtract the diagonal. With this, because of the fact that we've started with 16 and we've subtracted the number at the top, and subtracted the number at the left, we now have to add back in this number because that number has been add, uh, subtracted out twice. So let's look at kind of how the, the numbers for that, the math for that works out. So I've got my, let me clean this up. So I've got my 16, which represents this whole section here, minus three, which subtracts out this top section, minus seven, which subtracts out that side section, and then plus one, which is to add one of these guys back in because we subtracted that one out twice. Um, 16 minus three minus seven plus one is gonna give us the total of what's in that box. 16 minus three is 13, uh, 13 minus seven is six, six plus one is seven, um, and seven is four plus two plus one is seven. Um, so that's where that number's coming from. I'll do one or two more of these, um, but I think at this point it's pretty, uh, pretty well explained. Um, let's say like I wanna do this bottom corner right here. I wanna add up those numbers. So I'm gonna start with 32, which is the sum of everything in the entire grid. I need to subtract out 18, which is the sum of all these numbers up here. I need to subtract out, uh, where is it? Seven, is that right? No, 15. I need to subtract out 15, which represents this entire side section right here. So I've subtracted out the entire top section, which is 18. I've subtracted out the entire side section, which is 15. Um, but I have subtracted this top box out twice. And that represents, is represented by this 10. So I have to add that 10 back in. 32 minus 18 minus 15 plus 10. Let's see, 32 minus 18 would be one, was that 16? That's 16. Minus 15 would be one. Uh, plus 10 would be 11, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that's nine. I did that math wrong, didn't I? 32 minus eight should be 14, not 16. Um, 14 minus 15 would be negative one. And then plus 10 would be nine. Uh, and that nine then is one plus four plus one plus three. So the way we do this, just to kind of show more literally mathematically how this is gonna work. If I have a particular row and column, um, that I wanna solve. For example, I wanna know from rows, let's see, this is row zero, one, two, and three. 
rows zero, one, two, and three. If I want to know from row uh, two, two, let's actually offset it so it's not, let's do this, this part right here. So I want to know from row one, column two, uh, the sum from there up to row three, uh, column three. Then what I'm going to do is from my uh, uh, prefix sum here, zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four. Um, for my row, uh, for what I'm going to, uh, my, my target, I'm going to circle my target numbers here. My target number is going to be this minus that seven, minus that 15, uh, plus that three. And that three is because of this one and two that we have to add back in here. Uh, so what we're going to do then is in order to get the sum from there to there, we're going to do, this is the bottom right corner. We're going to do the bottom right corner plus one. So it'll be three plus one, three plus one. In each case, you're doing plus one because you want to get just past where the sum is. You want to get the number after the total. So after adding all those numbers, um, we ended up with 32. We're going to subtract out the number directly above it, um, which is going to be the same row that we start on, this row one, um, and then same column, which is three plus one, <clears throat> minus the number directly to the left, which is going to be the same row, three plus one, I'm running out of room here. And then the column would be uh, the ending column here, two. And then finally adding back in the top corner here, which is just these coordinates here, one, two, plus one, ran out of room, two. Um, <clears throat> you can fiddle with this. This actually isn't that hard. You just need to sit down and kind of play around with it. But essentially, you've got the bottom corner, which is after you've subtracted. You go straight up to the same row as the first value, row one. You go straight left to the same value of the column. Uh, so we have, if this is four, four, then we're gonna subtract out one, four and four, two. And then we're adding in the number right here, one, two, which is just everything that's uh, up and up into the left of that. Um, and this technique actually will work with things other than, than uh, just adding numbers together. <clears throat> For example, if you have a, a grid of Booleans, um, if you have like trues and falses, <clears throat> um, you can add those up. Um, and then it'll work the same way. You just count a true as a one and a false as a zero. Um, another option you can do is if you have a grid and you wanna know, you know, where are there values that are greater than 100 in the grid, um, you can take a grid of numbers and go through and replace it with a Boolean equivalency um, where everything greater than 100 becomes a one and everything less than 100 becomes a zero. Um, and you can use that to analyze. Um, I believe you also probably could do this with, with uh, words or, or letters. You can accumulate words and letters and then every single square would just represent all of the letters or words that are up into the left of you. Um, and then you can do the same subtraction and adding process. Um, you just have to do a little extra, um, extra bookkeeping with that. Um, but basically, anytime you have a grid where you want to try and analyze what's in the grid um, in constant time rather than linear time, you first pre-compute the table, which is just a matter of adding the numbers that are up and left and subtracting the diagonal. And then once you're done, you can calculate by getting the rows and the columns of whatever your box is. Remember, this was this total right here was this total right here. You get the number on the bottom right, subtract the top, subtract the left, and then add back in this diagonal because that will have been subtracted twice. So that's 2D prefix sums. Hopefully that's helpful for you. And I will talk to you in the next video.